Today we will be comparing the Crusader C1 Spirit versus the Drake Cutlass Black in the role of the small to medium cargo hauler in the Star Citizen 324. With the Citizen release 324 gone live, most of us will soon be knees deep in cargo hauling, so naturally I wanted to take a look and compare some of the ships we will be flying. Note that I didn't want to review the starter ships as a choice of these sometimes is dictated by the game package we purchase or by the game loops we think we will play. So rather than examining cutters, 315 P's and Avenger Titans, I wanted to take a deeper look on the next set of ships we will be purchasing, hopefully with in-store credit. Also, we have to take into account the in-game ship prices that have been jacked up by a large margin, making the purchase of your next cargo hauler even more significant once a wipe comes with the next patch. So, we will be examining three ships, Crusader C1 Spirit, the Drake Cutlass Black and a MISC Freelancer. One very important note, I will be mainly comparing these three ships from the perspective of the cargo hauling profession. Abilities of the ships to participate in combat missions, bounty hunting, being a dropship, etc. is of no interest to me in that comparison and it has already been covered by many other content creators out there. I am only interested in their ability to hold cargo and how do they feel while doing that. And we will be covering the good, the bad and the ugly. So let's take the first one, the Crusader C1 Spirit, the good stuff. The Crusader industry C1 Spirit with its cargo grid capacity of 64 and generous cargo base space is easily the hauler with the most hauling potential of the three. You can easily fit three times 32 SCU boxes and with some finagling well over 100 SCU of cargo putting it on par with Constellation Andromeda and Freelancer Max, which is a tier above the rest in comparison. The 3 times 32 SU boxes when loading can go very quickly, which is important during the loading at outpost you might be vulnerable to a pirate ambush. This way, time loading is brought down to a minimum. Second thing is its sleek aerodynamic profile, solid armament, great SCU speeds and afterburner speeds make it an easy fan favorite. It has best placed ship mounted tractor beam for the time we will no longer be able to use handheld tractor beams you know, to move 32 SU boxes. We do have the rifle, but you know, the ship cargo tractor beams will surely find their place in the verse. And also it has an additional airlock in the back so that cargo can be put behind pressurized doors when the cargo ramp is down, which will probably play a role once life support comes into online and engineering gameplay in 4.0 or later. Now let's talk a little bit about the bad stuff. And here comes my first gripe with the vessel. The addition of the airlock door makes it sometimes complicated and tricky to load cargo boxes as sometimes get, they get stuck while loading. Trust me, many times I've actually tried to load it in and then they just get stuck and it takes a while until you can, you know, wiggle them inside as you should. The ship's only way in and way out is its rear cargo ramp. In my opinion, that's a lackluster. This makes it difficult to come through if you have loaded it up to the brim and sometimes you might not be able to come to the cockpit. An additional door or an elevator would make up a huge difference, allowing the ship to be stuffed like a Thanksgiving turkey while you enter a ship like a boss on the other side, like for example in Freelancer. The ship's tractor beam takes some getting used to and can be only manned by a co-pilot requiring a solo player to switch seats which in my opinion is not a big deal per se, but it can detract a few people. And finally, it has fewer guns than some of its contenders, but it can hold its own and is the fastest of the bunch. So the aim with this ship is to flight and not to fight, basically just run. Now let's talk a little bit about the ugly. I mean, it's not that bad, but still its size meant it was often getting stuck when you're trying to land into the smaller hangars. Hopefully that will no longer be the case, but uh, that was been corrected in 324 by giving all ships a class one hangar above so they can fit nicely. And apart from that, there is not much ugly stuff. Overall, it's a nice, well-rounded ship. It's a well-rounded ship whose every detail screams cargo hauler. It was built for that role and it does it well. Few cargo loading shenanigans aside, I can easily recommend it as your second ship. The only real downside is an extra 1 million AUEC more asking price compared to, for example, the Cutty Black. Speaking of the Cutty Black, so the Drake Interplanetary with its cheaper pricing and utilitarian design 
but lower cargo grid capacity can be a hard sell for some dedicated cargo haulers at the first glance. But do not dismiss it just yet, as this ship packs a lot of surprises which make it stand out in some scenarios. First, let's take the good. The cargo grid has capacity of 46, which is quite decent for some mid-level cargo mission, and the layout is 2 times 16, 2 times 10, and... Uh, 2 times 2 and 10 times 1. It might not be everyone's first wish, and the unfortunate ship tractor beam placement is less than ideal. The place where Cutty Black really shines is it in its utility, ease of loading and unloading, which comes from its additional two side doors that can open, greatly facilitating the loading process. The doors together with the rear ramp give you a lot of options how you want to load your cargo, and it also makes it, it easier to squeeze additional boxes without having to consider how will you be able to get out? Unlike the C1 Spirit that has only the rear ramp and essentially bottlenecking the cargo loading, especially when you're playing with friends, Kati, when you open all of its doors with two to three people, can be loaded in a minute or so. This is especially handy if you are loading your cargo in, shall we say, less controlled space that depends on armistice zones. Kati can be loaded fast and it excels in the situation where you come, load your stuff and run making it ideal for smuggling, privateering and other type of shady cargo hauling activities. Taking into a account that while other cargo haulers of this class are completely vulnerable during the loading process, the fact that Kati can have a person in a manned turret covering the loading process further accentuates the nature of the use for the ship. So when we look into the weapons, it is clear that Cuddy Black, the pilot has a choice between staying and fighting or fleeing when attacked. The ship's VTOL thrusters are powerful and can get you quickly out of pickle, especially once the atmospheric flight comes into play. Its four size 3 weapons pack a significant punch, and you have a, if you have a friend in the turret, the amount of firepower that you can project means every pirate should think twice before attacking you. In addition, the general's missile loadout means that you can swarm your pursuers with missiles while you bail to fight another day. Now, let's look into a little bit of the bad stuff. The cargo grid is a bit less than the C1 Spirit, so the total mass you can carry is less. But you can do it quicker. Bad tractor beam placement can make it hard to load the ship using it, but for now it's too early to tell if that will be a stopping problem. Also, I think it needs colliders update as I found that boxes sometimes phase through the turret which can result in glitching. And a few things that are ugly. However, Kati's lack of aerodynamics, although held in check by its powerful engines, can become a problem if your engines take damage. For example, Destroying one of the Kati's rear engines makes it so unstable that it's virtually unusable, regardless if it's in atmosphere or in space, and those engines are actually a big target. Couple that with the less armor than the C1 Spirit, and you have a ship that is more powerful but also more fragile than its competitor. It is clear that the role for the Cutlass Black compared to the C1 Spirit from start has been to support the cargo hauling in less regulated space like Pyro and on other non-armistice zones, where quick in and out, supported by a man turret, might be required. The word quick is the name of the game with the Cutty, and this is the role that where it shines. While its cargo hauling capa capabilities lack behind the C1, its utility and speed more than make up for it, making it ideal for players that prefer a bit more fast-paced gameplay. Now, let's take a look at the third contender, the MISC Freelancer. Honestly, I struggled if I should be even putting the fre Freelancer on this list, but given that ship is in the game, it feels merit to have it checked and evaluated with the rest. I have also deliberately not chosen to take the Max variant, as I feel it would be an unfair comparison, as the Freelancer Mac is better compared to the likes of Corsair and Connie Andromeda. Now, on paper, and in the pledge store, the MISC Freelancer should be on par with the C1 Spirit. With the carry capacity, while being a little bit slower, it would on paper be better equipped with turrets and in general tougher not to crack, while sacrificing some speed. However, in reality, the ship is something else. It is a complete looks like, flies like, and fights like a 70-year-old granny with no disrespect to the 70-year-old granny as she probably fights better in reality. Let's take a look at the good stuff, well, as much as there is. The ship has, on paper, a total cargo space of the 66 SCU, most of the three. However, its utility is hampered by clumsy and outdated design and weird cargo grid placement. The ship has two entrances, the rear ramp and the hatch in front. This means that you can cram however much cargo you want in its cargo hold, close it and never 
never look back while you enter the ship by the front entrance like a boss. And finally, the ship has two manned turrets, which on paper would provide you with a better defense, but their coverage arc and the ship's ability to outrun its pursuers is questioning it significantly. Okay, let's take a look at the bad. So where to begin? The small cargo loading ramp is downright a nightmare for loading cargo. It takes a lot of finagling to get things in and the other portion of the cargo bay is locked behind the closed doors. Good luck trying to get anything bigger crates past it. Second thing, the ship is slow. Both in space and in atmosphere. It flies like turns like and even with its afterburners fully on, it takes ages to get anywhere. I got a feeling that both C1 Spirit and the Cutty Black were faster in atmosphere on the regular nav mode speed than the freelancer was in full afterburner. The only happy feeling in freelancer you get is when you finally get to your destination. Like, you know, I made it. I survived. It's a real sense of accomplishment, I can tell you this much. Despite more turrets than the Kati, the turning arcs are pretty much useless on most ships either from the front or the rear where the turrets have limited capability. And the lack of the pilot controlled weapons makes this total shit in the pan. Now, for the conclusion, Misk Freelancer is an outdated design and it shows in every nook and cranny. The only true advantage you can hope is to have the with this ship is if you get ambushed by pirates, you might get sympathy points from them for flying this utter piece of garbage. And they might leave you alone, figuring you already have enough problems in your life as it is. It's like having a car that even the thieves don't want to steal. Including this ship in this comparison has actually helped me to understand just how far superior the other two are and why should you consider either of them. Speaking about the conclusion, it doesn't matter which of the C1 Spirit or the Cutty Black you choose. They're both excellent small to medium cargo haulers that will serve you well, albeit for slightly different roles. I personally prefer the Cutty, as its simplicity in terms of loading and unloading through the triple doors made cargo fun for me. And when I played with friends, we were able to load it so quickly that on speed alone it was more profitable than the C1 Spirit, which was bottlenecked on the loading due to having a single cargo ramp. So if speed is your jam, I would go for the Cutty, although if you prefer chill and relaxed gameplay going only in the high security areas, then the C1 Spirit's extra cargo capacity might be the thing for you. What is your favorite small, small to medium cargo hauler? Please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And if you're just starting out with cargo hauling, then take a look at my beginner's guide in the suggested video section at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.